In Florida in 2016, Jake is going through his teenage years, but he's mostly ignored and bullied by his peers. One day at work, he gets a call from his grandfather who is in the middle of a breakdown, which experts blame on dementia. Jake's father can't leave work so his supervisor Shelly gives him a ride. On their way there, Jake calls Grandpa Abe, who asks Jake not to come to his house because it isn't safe. He's nervous because he can't find the key to his gun cabinet, which the family took away on purpose for his safety, but Abe now thinks he can't defend himself. Night has fallen by the time Jake and Shelly arrive at the neighborhood, and Shelly has to dodge a mysterious man with white eyes in the middle of the road. They find the house has been broken in, so while Shelly grabs her weapon from her car, Jake follows a path of destruction into the forest, where he finds a flashlight covered in blood and the body of his grandfather missing his eyes. He tries to call 911, but Abe stops him, telling him to go to the island and find the loop of September 3, 1943 before dying for good. At that moment, a big monster appears among the trees but also to Shelly, who shoots at it when Jake warns her. A month later, Jake's still going to therapy with Dr. Golan, who tells him it's perfectly natural to see things that aren't there when the mind is going through traumatic situations. Jake thinks this is a monster from the stories Abe used to tell him when he babysat Jake. He always talked about secret islands, magical places, and the children's home in Wales he grew up in. He used to show him pictures of the headmistress, who could turn into a bird, and all the other kids, who had special powers. Abe's parents had sent him to live there to escape from the eyeless monsters that were in Poland at the time. Little Jake used to believe in those stories, but soon in school, he was made fun of for it and the teacher taught him that Abe's monsters were just the horrors of war seen through the eyes of a child. A few days later, the family throws Jake a surprise birthday party and his aunt gives him the last gift Abe left behind for him. Jake finds a book with a postcard inside showing an island in Wales and a message from two years ago from the children's home, asking him to visit. This inspires Jake to want to go, and Dr. Golan approves of the idea because it may help him to move on. Jake's father Frank takes his son to Wales on the family boat, that way he also gets a vacation to work on his book about birds. On their way there, they see a peregrine falcon flying above them, and Jake talks to it as he jokes that it may be the headmistress. The island has a small town and only one hotel in it, which is mostly empty except for the manager and Augie, a blind man. After leaving their things in their room, Jake wants to find the children's home, but Frank wants to go bird watching, so he pays a couple of local teenagers to take Jake to the other side of the island. These guys take Jake through a weird shortcut, but their directions are correct, Jake finds the children's home, or at least, what's left of it. Disappointed by finding only the ruins of the house, Jake returns to the hotel, where Augie tells him a German air raid bombed the island on September 3, 1943, the same date Abe mentioned before his death. The next day, Jake returns to the house to investigate. Among the ruins of the house, Jake can see the children from Abe's pictures and runs away, only to trip and lose consciousness. When he wakes up, he finds himself being carried by Bronwyn, a girl with super strength. Some of the other kids are there as well, and Jake can easily recognize them from Abe's stories. Emma, the girl that can levitate, the twins, whose hidden faces can turn anyone into stone, Olive, who can make fire with her hands, and Millard, an invisible boy. They promise him none of them died and take him into the cave so he can cross into the loop, but Jake feels a weird sensation inside that cave that scares him into returning to the hotel. The town looks different now, everything looks lively and the hotel is crowded. The locals hear his American accents and believe him to be a spy, but before things can escalate, the objects around the room begin flying and smashing against the walls. Olive shows up and drags Jake out before lighting the building on fire while outside, German airplanes are beginning to fly over the area. The kids take Jake away in a carriage, where he discovers that the flying objects have been a trick for Millard, who can't be seen once he takes off his clothes. Emma explains they now are in 1943 and they're stuck on this day every day, this is why when they make it to the house, it's in perfect condition. Jake finally gets to meet the headmistress Miss Peregrine, who comments Abe had told her about Jake through letters. As Miss Peregrine takes Jake around the house and shares some tea, Jake gets to meet the other kids, Enoch, who doesn't like his presence, Fiona, who can make plants grow at will, Claire, who has a mouth on the back of her head, Horace, who has prophetic dreams, and Hugh, a boy with bees living in his stomach. Miss Peregrine explains that they're known as peculiar, which is a recessive gene carried down through families, although sometimes it skips generations. These peculiars have always been persecuted, so they live in places like this. Not only she can turn into a bird, Miss Peregrine's also a Weimbrine, a person that can control time. Weimbrins choose a safe location and day to create a loop that preserves the last 24 hours where peculiars can live safely from the outside world, and there are many of them around the globe. This also means the kids never get to grow up. Meanwhile, Emma's rescuing a squirrel that fell from a tree and Jake helps her with the task that used to be Abe's. He ties a rope around Emma's waist, who takes off her lead shoes so she can float up and put the squirrel back in its nest to then be brought back to the ground by Jake and the rope. 
Afterward, Jake goes inside to borrow Abe's old clothes to wear at dinner and gets the chance to see Enoch using his powers. He can bring inanimate objects to life as his living puppets. While Emma helps him with the necktie, she tells him they know Abe is dead and explains he left this house to explore other loops, but she can't answer any more questions. During dinner, Miss Peregrine forbids Jake from sharing details about the future with them. The kids want Jake to stay with them even if he isn't peculiar, but Enoch is jealous of his presence and wants him to leave like Abe did to join the army. Their conversation is interrupted by the phone ringing, and Miss Peregrine picks up a call from a young Abe, but she doesn't tell the children about it. After dinner, Horace plays one of his dreams for everyone. Sometimes they're prophetic, other times are silly, today they show a captured wine brine plus Jake and Emma about to kiss. Afterward, Miss Peregrine invites Jake to stay the night and he gets to witness how she rewinds time when the bomb is about to fall on the house. The next morning, Jake finds a letter from Abe and takes it with him when he leaves. Emma guides him through the cave as she explains the kids can't leave because the years would catch up shortly after they're out of a loop, making them die from old age. At that moment, a wounded bird enters the cave, it's the wounded wine brine from Horace's dream. Emma hurries to take the bird back to the house while Jake reunites with his father, telling him he spent the day with the local kids. However, his cover blows up when a farmer asks who killed all his sheep and the teenagers deny having seen Jake. Thinking his son is having a breakdown, Frank forbids him from going out alone again. Once he's back in his room, Jake opens Abe's letter, which has 2016 as a date. He warns Miss Peregrine about some white-eyed dangerous people in England, where another loop is hidden. The next morning, Frank takes Jake to the beach, where they meet Lamont, who is also birdwatching to write a book. This man has the latest equipment and that depresses Frank, who thinks his book won't be able to compare. Frank decides to return to the hotel to drink and nap, so as soon as he falls asleep, Jake sneaks out and goes to see Miss Peregrine. The wine brine she's taking care of is the one from the loop in England, which got attacked by the monsters Abe mentioned, but she still refuses to explain what's going on. Enoch hears all this and decides to introduce Jake to the last kid, Victor. It turns out this boy is dead with his eyes missing, just like Abe, and Enoch activates him with his power just to scare Jake away. He goes to ask Emma for support, explaining he's seen a white-eyed person before, Emma decides to help him identify the person by taking Jake to her secret hideout. There's a sunken ship on the near beach and Emma takes Jake there by forming a bubble around his head. She also removes the water from one of the rooms by blowing air into it. This is because Emma doesn't only levitate, she manipulates air in general. In this room, there's a safe Abe asked Emma to protect, and inside they find a map with all the loops plus pictures of the white-eyed people, including the man Jake had seen. That's Mr. Baron, the leader of a group of bad peculiars that Abe dedicated his life to hunting. This group would raid loops and kill the children, so Abe tried to stop them, he only retired when Jake was born to protect him. Only peculiars can enter the loop, meaning Jake is one. He doesn't believe it, so to prove it, Emma takes Jake back to the island to show him how every loop, Miss Peregrine kills the monster that killed Victor. She only knows it's there because Abe had told her, these monsters are invisible to all the other peculiars. Abe's power was to see them, and Jake inherited this ability. When they return to the house, Miss Peregrine finally explains it all. Abe had wanted Jake to have a normal childhood and only learned this when he turned 18, but this is an emergency. Many years ago, a splinter faction emerged among the Peculiars. They were tired of living in the loops, and Baron thought that by harnessing the essence of a wine brine's power, they could gain immortality and live outside loops. Baron kidnapped a wine brine and his group killed her to absorb her powers, but this caused them to transform into these monsters called Hollows. However, a few years later some members of the group, Baron included, managed to get their human form back by eating the eyes of peculiar children, and now they were whites. Their eyes stayed white, and they kept raiding loops to get more eyes for the hollows that were still in monster form. At that moment, the wounded wine brine awakes and Jake meets the headmistress of the London Loop, Miss Esmeralda. She confirms they were attacked by hollows, and the whites have set up their machine in the Blackpool Tower thanks to the loop in the area. They want to try the experiment again because they still aren't immortal. Hollows attack everything in their path and Jake realizes the dead sheep are a sign they're already here, so Miss Peregrine decides it's time for them to leave this loop and start one somewhere else. Jake needs to leave or he'll be stuck in 1943, making Emma cry for choosing his family over the peculiar children who need his help seeing the monsters. On his way back to the hotel, Jake finds Frank, Lamont, and a group of people looking at Augie's body, which is missing his eyes. Suspecting what happened, Jake runs away to warn Miss Peregrine, but since Frank doesn't have the energy to go after him, Lamont volunteers to bring the boy back. At the cave, Jake is shocked to see Lamont can cross the loop too and the truth comes to light, this is Baron, who can shapeshift. For months, he's been keeping an eye on Jake by pretending to be Dr. Golan, and now Jake has finally given him what he needed, a way into Miss Peregrine's loop. Baron transforms his hand into a blade and takes Jake back to the house where everyone is packing to leave. Since Jake's the only one that can see the monsters and therefore protect the kids, Miss Peregrine accepts to go with Baron in exchange for Jake. 
Baron takes her away in a cage, and once they're gone, Esmeralda and the kids begin sealing up the windows and doors to defend themselves At that moment, young Abe calls the house to confirm he's fine and Jake gets to tell him he's the best grandpa in the world. Then, a hollow gets inside by breaking a window and kills Esmeralda. It also captures Enoch, but Jake gets it to drop him by hitting him with Miss Peregrine's crossbow. It's still alive though, so the kids run away and escape through another window, climbing down the roof plus a tree branch that Fiona makes larger and Emma carrying Jake down by floating. At that moment, the German planes arrive to bomb the area, making the house explode and killing the hollow with it. Without Miss Peregrine here, the loop ends and the house stays in ruins. They need to go after Baron, so the kids go to the beach and Emma uses her air powers to remove all the water from the sunken ship, making it float again. Olive lights up the engines and the group make a plan to fight the bad guys once they reach the latest loop in London, which is stuck in 2016, meaning Jake could see Abe again. Once they arrive in London, they cross a loop hidden in a ghost train in an amusement park and arrive at the same location a few months ago. Emma and Jake sneak into the Blackpool Tower and find a bunch of hollows and the whites, including Baron, waiting for the experiment to get started. Emma reveals herself by floating up and asks them to free all the Weinbrins before Jake drags her out by the rope, so Baron sends the hollows and two whites after them. The pair guides them back to the park, where the kids throw snowballs and cotton candy at the hollows to make them visible. Then, Enoch uses his powers to activate the skeletons in the ship and they cross the loop as well to kill the hollows and the whites. Bronwyn helps too by throwing a carousel unicorn at them. Next, they go back to the tower, where Emma pushes Baron back with her air and Hugh sends his bees after the whites. Enoch, Olive, Horace, and Jake try to attack the Baron, but they're all easily pushed away before he leaves to another room to start the experiment. The male white catches Bronwyn and pushes her into a pool to freeze the water, so Fiona throws some seeds at him to capture him with her plants. Sadly, he kills the plants with his ice and then goes after Olive, whose fire isn't strong enough against him. Enoch finds an old metal elephant model and activates it to make it kill the male white while the female one goes after the others. Claire catches her arm with her extra mouth and the twins reveal their faces to transform the white into stone, which breaks when it falls. Thinking Olive is dead, Enoch declares his love for her and kisses her, but then she wakes up. Emma and Jake go after Baron, who easily dodges the shots from Jake's crossbow. Once again, Emma pushes him back with her air while Jake enters the room to free all the wine brins from the cage. When Emma runs out of energy, Baron goes after Jake, but it's at that moment that all the birds fly out, attacking Baron before leaving the building to make new loops. Enoch and Emma enter the room and are shocked to find there are two Jakes now. They can't tell who is real and who is Baron, but the solution quickly falls on their laps, one of the hollows is still alive and has entered the tower. The real Jake can see it so he steps back while the hollow captures Baron and kills him, then Jake kills the hollow in return by shooting it with the crossbow. Afterward, Jake says goodbye to the kids, who return to the loop to stay in 1943 while he goes back to his old town to see Abe again since he's alive, thanks to Baron having died in the past. After Jake shares his story, Abe gives him his birthday present. It's the same book, but this time inside there's money in different currencies and a loop map in order to travel and find the kids again, because Abe wants him to be with them. Months later, Jake finally finds the ship again after jumping through many loops all over the world and even joining the Navy. He and Emma reunite with a kiss as the kids set sail with Miss Peregrine following them in her bird form, ready to find a safe place to set up a new loop.